Today, Intel's bringing the power draw. AMD's new Ryzen Z1 Extreme APU was amazing. The most powerful small form factor GPU is here, and gamers are sick of Nvidia's crap. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, according to a new blog post by Intel and later reported by Tom's Hardware, Intel is apparently planning some wild coolers for future chips. In fact, they're looking at cooling solutions for chips up to 2,000 watts. Now, I will say that these would be for the data center, but it's clear that Intel doesn't plan on slowing down when it comes to their huge power consumption. One of their ideas is to integrate 3D vapor chamber cavities inside a coral-shaped heatsink. That would obviously be a tricky design to make, so they plan to do it with 3D printers. Apparently, cooling accounts for up to 40% of a data center's energy consumption, so better and more efficient cooling is paramount to the future of servers. Of course, given Intel is working on solutions for chips up to 2,000 watts, I'm not sure they have low power consumption in mind. Maybe they mean multiple sockets, but even then, 2000 watts is wild. Let's just hope they don't plan to bring these kind of SKUs anywhere near the consumer market. Next up for today, we have a couple really interesting stories about a new Ryzen chip, including some impressive performance. But before I get to that, I've got an interesting problem I want to see if you can solve. Let's pretend that you have a huge tank of water. Then to the left of that, there's a 10 kilogram toy car in a separate tank that's 1 20th the radius of the larger tank. How much weight can the 10 kilogram car hold in the larger tank with the water levels even? 10 kilograms, 40 kilograms, 100? You can find out that and a ton more with today's sponsor. Brilliant! the online learning platform that was built to teach the STEM field. What's great is that they teach you by getting you to do it yourself with fun, interactive puzzles. And they have amazing courses in computer science, from the fundamentals to more advanced stuff like neural networks and AI. You can learn it all. And the best part is that you can try it for free for 30 days when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And if you know the answer to the problem, let me know down in the comments below. To figure it out yourself, visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. It's under their scientific thinking course. Oh, and you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Now back to the story, a new AMD APU has been discovered, called the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. The chip was found in a Geekbench benchmark, and it's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU with, according to the benchmark, a 3.3 GHz base clock and a boost up to 5.062 GHz. Not only that, but it apparently comes with AMD's new 780M integrated GPU. As for what this chip was made for, it was benchmarked in ASUS's upcoming handheld console, the ROG Ally, and given ASUS already confirmed that the Ally comes with a custom AMD APU, this clearly looks to be it. In fact, there was a non-extreme version also found that's likely made for a lower-end ROG Ally. Either way, what's really amazing about this new APU is that we recently got one of the first benchmarks for AMD's new entry-level RX 6300 GPU. As you can see, it got an OpenCL score of 25,608, yet the integrated GPU in AMD's new Z1 Extreme scored significantly significantly higher at 35,498. Now it is Geekbench 5 versus 6, but other 780M integrated GPUs score similar in Geekbench 6 and 5, meaning this integrated GPU beats AMD's new low-end discrete GPU. Of course, this is just OpenCL, so it's not the best real-world benchmark, and the 6300 is set to be really inexpensive. But still, I'm impressed. Let's just say ASUS's upcoming handheld is set to be a beast. Next up, NVIDIA just released the most powerful small form factor GPU ever, and it's a really interesting card. It's called the RTX 4000 SFF, and it's built on NVIDIA's new Ada Lovelace architecture from a cut-down 8104 GPU, which is the same GPU the 4070 Ti is made from. Instead of 7680 cores, though, it gets 6144, and those cores are clocked to just 1560 megahertz to keep the total board power down. And speaking of, that maximum board power is a minuscule 70 watts, and it does all of this in a very small, dual-slot, low-profile board. Not only that, but the card comes with 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 ECC memory. Now, given the memory, it's obvious that this is more of a professional GPU, but as Tech Power Up mentions, you can use it in a regular gaming rig, though you would need to adapt the mini DisplayPort connectors. As far as performance, based on the specs, it looks set to get right around an RTX 3070. And while that may not sound like much, 
much, remember that the 70 watt CBP is far less than half that of Nvidia's 3070 card, and it's of course significantly smaller, so it's certainly an impressive feat. Unfortunately, because it's more of a professional GPU with professional drivers, support for certain professional software, etc., it's not cheap. In fact, the RTX 4000 SFF recently went on sale at Shop BLT for a whopping $1,444. So we're talking between the 4080 and 4090's pricing with only a 3070's performance. Still, if you really need something that draws very little power for a tiny build, especially if it's a professional build, it may be worth it for you. Either way, it's available right now. And lastly for today, it looks like gamers have finally had enough of the absurd pricing of next-gen GPUs. So much so that according to at least one report in China, Nvidia is being forced to cut or at least slow production of their newly released RTX 4070 for a month. And yeah, this is Nvidia's brand new GPU. To further illustrate this, a Polish retailer recently lowered the price of an MSRP card by a whopping 9%, and that was just after reports of a 40-pound price drop in the UK. Also Ultimately, I think this proves that gamers have had enough of these absurd prices. Some new charts have been going around that really shows just how absurd the RTX 4000 series really is when compared to other generations. As you can see here, the 4070 is around 2% faster than the 3080, with previous 70 series generations being quite a bit faster than their last gen 80 counterpart. And yet, when we look at this chart with the difference in price, we see a giant leap from the 4080 series and a jump from the 70 series with it having crept up over the years. Ultimately, like I've said before, I really think NVIDIA was hoping they could rely on their DLSS3 frame generation tech to distinguish between the previous generations of GPUs. Of course, it doesn't help that AMD is working on their own frame generation tech that may work on older AMD and possibly even older NVIDIA GPUs. At the end of the day, it's clear that gamers aren't impressed with NVIDIA's newest GPU. So while that does it for today, are you tired of next-gen GPU prices, or are you more pumped for things like AMD's APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!